Way to neglect the Jewish viewers, Luke. Sweet Hanukkah much? <laughs> Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the CrossFit for your brain. Can I be honest? When I first heard about CrossFit, I thought it was like a cooperative board game or something. All right, all right, let's talk Marvel and Netflix. We all love Marvel movies, right? As evidenced by all the requests that I get from you, that is a pretty solid yes. And 2017 is gonna be an awesome year for them. Guardians 2 and Spider-Man, I cannot wait. But over the holidays, I took some time to catch up on the rest of the Marvel universe. You know, the guys who are still waiting for their crack at the big screen. And without question, the biggest of those guys is Luke Cage. Now over here on Film Theory, I don't know if you've noticed it, but I seem to have an obsession with trying to kill superheroes. Can be brought down by a simple bullet, destroy the brain, and Wade Wilson, as we know him, ceases to be. Once lured in, Superman won't know what hit him. Oh man, looking at that. If I wasn't me and I saw that, I would be very concerned about my mental state. But luckily, I am me and all murderous sociopathy aside, maybe it's just my long-held desire to be a supervillain. Or, quite simply, maybe it's my desire to be able to beat brawn with brains. Or maybe I just want some compelling but ultimately honest clickbait. I am not really sure. Probably some combination of all three of those things. What I am sure about, though, is that one superhero is safe and that one is Aquaman, because your power suck. Way to put innocent marine life into the line of fire for ya. But enough about Aquaman because sweet, sweet Christmas, Luke Cage, today it is you who has drawn the short straw. In other words, it is time for you to meet my Lucille. Well, it's actually a metaphorical Lucille because literally hitting Luke with a barbed wire bat wouldn't have any effect due to his one superpower, impenetrable skin. That's right, throughout Marvel's Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, Luke is routinely shot, stabbed, blown up, shot again, stabbed again, and blown up again, but all of it has no effect on Luke. He's like a steel electric type Pokemon. He just walks away without a scratch. Daredevil was bedridden half a season two because of a couple of punches, and Jessica Jones received her fair share of scars, but not Luke. The villains of the series, Cottonmouth and Diamondback, have to literally resort to alien bullets just to have a fighting chance against the guy. So this got me to thinking, is there a simpler solution here than just magic ET bullets? What if everything you needed was right here on Earth, at your very fingertips? Well, Get ready, Luke, cause the rise of Dr. Theory is upon you. <laughs> Hey, I said I wanted to be a supervillain, okay? I didn't say I had a good name picked out yet. Evil mind. No, no. Anti-Pat. No, nothing. Never mind. So like I said, ultimately all of Luke Cage's powers boil down to one thing. His skin. Skin made out of three layers measuring two millimeters thick and creating one impenetrable body. And that's it. Get past that outer wall Cena and he's just as vulnerable as you or me. As we learn about at the end of Jessica Jones, after Luke takes a shotgun to the face, the whiplash from the shotgun blast causes Luke's brain brain to slam against his skull, putting him into an immediate coma. So to take Luke Cage out, we just need to get to those squishy innards of his. Now throughout season one of this Netflix series, every single villain has focused on piercing Luke's two millimeter fortress of protection via knives, guns, rocket launchers, shotguns, alien bullets, but everyone's been looking at this from the wrong perspective. The focus shouldn't be on breaking through Luke's skin, but instead lowering his defenses from the inside out, turning his enhanced skin back to what it once was, regular old easy to pierce, please don't look at my saggy love handles, human skin. And in order to do that, we need to look at his origin story. Now before Luke Cage was a superhuman with the toughest skin on earth, he was just your average guy with normal skin and horrific facial hair. Man Marvel, I know your budgets aren't quite the same for the Netflix series, but jeez, it looks like you glued a chia pet onto his chin. Anyway, while in prison, Luke Cage is beaten nearly to death after an altercation with other inmates. He's only saved when the prison doctor, Dr. Burstein performs an experimental treatment on him, resulting in his impenetrable skin. Later on in the series, Dr. Burstein actually reveals the source of Luke's superhuman abilities. Luke's chemical composition, his DNA, has been fused with the foreign DNA of an abalone. We used a process called CRISPR to fuse the subject's DNA with another DNA to gain its attributes. Now, believe it or not, but this CRISPR process that Dr. Burstein mentions is actually a real thing. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palette 
palindromic repeats. It's a very real process wherein specific stretches of genetic code target and edit DNA. Using the enzyme Cas9, scientists cut out specific strings of DNA and replace it with whatever the heck they want. It's basically just like what happens in Jurassic Park, except real, in real life. The end result is that scientists can modify and enhance genes in cells to make them better. In China, researchers have successfully used CRISPR to create extra muscular dogs for hunting and military purposes. Damn you, China and your mutant dogs! And what has the US done with this amazing scientific innovation? Well, we gave Luke Cage the power of delicious seafood. Foreign DNA was abalone shell, wasn't it? Yes, an abalone. It is a snail that lives in the sea. A sea snail. Now, I make jokes because that seems lame, but abalone are actually known for their incredibly hard shells, abalone nacre. The shells are so strong, in fact, that students at UC San Diego are now using them to create body armor, tougher and stronger than Kevlar. But it doesn't stop there. Abalone is just as strong as steel and can even stop bullets. So maybe Aquaman's powers aren't so silly after all. Imagine him having a team of impenetrable shells fish as bodyguards. All right, on second thought, it's still really dumb. Speaking of dumb, Aquaman's hair. Go get some conditioner because the sea salt is really starting to build up there, buddy. So one method we see in the show is eroding what makes the abalone so strong. Dr. Burstein implements this tactic when trying to remove the alien shrapnel from Luke's body in a series of acid baths. Per Dr. Burstein, abalone, on its own, is nearly impenetrable, a shield of stacked calcium carbonate plates, but by destroying the hydrogen covalent bonds between those plates, he can actually break through. Your skin cells were bonded with hydrogen covalent bonds at the exact point of acidity, temperature, and saline concentration. Now, before we go any further, for those unfamiliar, a covalent bond is a super strong chemical bond that pairs electrons between atoms, strengthening their outer shells and stabilizing them. Basically, think of a covalent bond like a marriage. Two hot, single young atoms catch each other's eyes from across the molecular field, recognize that they need the other one to fill a hole in their life, or at least their valence shell, and a few rounds of Netflix and chill later, they've formed a tight bond. A tight, covalent bond. Now, in order to perform surgery on Luke Cage, Dr. Burstein needs to break those covalent bonds. Dr. Burstein is basically the hussy from across the street trying to horn in on your man, homewrecker after you gave all your atomic energy to that no-good cheating husband of yours. It's like an episode of Nerdy Jerry Springer. To break up the bonds, the doctor recreates the exact same circumstances that caused Luke's powers in the first place. And scientifically speaking, this is completely the right approach. The only way to break a covalent bond is by recreating what caused the bond in the first place. So way to go! Luke Cage writers, you have done your homework, unlike others. So to break those covalent bonds that bind you, you have to match the same amount of energy needed to form the bond in the first place. For Luke Cage, Dr. Burstein knows the reactants that formed Luke's super skin, acid, saline, Luke's DNA, and abalone DNA. But he doesn't know the amount of energy needed to break up that product. The doctor says as much in episode 9. The wild card is the temperature. Quite simply, Burstein's unsure just how strong the covalent bonds are in Luke's body and dips him into higher and higher temperatures of acid bath to find the level where there's enough energy to break through Luke's skin, but not so much energy that it dissolves him alive. You know, that might be bad. Now, obviously this is ridiculously complicated, but I've gotta tell ya, there's a much easier way to defeat Luke Cage, one that doesn't require acid or the existence of aliens with killer ballistics. Consider this, given the controversy surrounding human genome splicing, geneticists have created ways to reverse the CRISPR process. You know, in case all this genetic meddling leads to some sort of less than desired effect, like a, a three-eyed fish, or someone who looks like a red skull or something. So the true secret to beating Luke Cage is to reverse the CRISPR process, but that's gotta be really hard, right? Well, you'd be surprised. So scientists typically reverse these effects using what's known as restriction enzymes, which are kind of like super selective scissors for DNA. Except, instead of cutting paper and forming origami flowers, you're cutting into human DNA and forming uh, super human flowers. Each restriction enzyme recognizes a particular DNA sequence and cuts out this sequence within the DNA. Thus, to reverse Luke Cage's powers, all you have to do is cut out the foreign DNA, that abalone nacre sequence, from the source DNA, Luke Cage, turning him back into a mere thin-skinned mortal. So at this point, you might be saying to yourself, well, Matt, that doesn't sound a whole lot easier than dipping him into an acid bath. Where do I get my hands on restriction enzymes for abalone nacre? To which I say to you, Google. 
it's only 58 bucks? It's like Black Friday all over again. But then how do you get all of this into him, I hear you asking? They can't even cut into his skin, so what chance does a needle have? To which I say to you, none. No chance in heck. A needle is not the way to go. Besides, if you simply injected the restriction enzyme into Luke Cage, his immune system would immediately destroy those foreign proteins. And Luke Cage would probably destroy you for trying to stab him with a mysterious needle. However, I've thought of that. And scientists have already discovered ways to break through the human body's natural barrier system. And the answer is viruses. Through a process known as viral transduction, scientists package foreign DNA into a virus and then expose it to a cell. Once a virus binds to the living cell, it injects the foreign DNA into the host and then replicates this DNA throughout the body. Think of the process like a Trojan horse, where a bunch of heavily armed soldiers sneak their way past your cell's defensive gates. But I already know what you're thinking. How do you get your hands on a virus? I mean, it's not like you can just go online and purchase the common cold off the internet. Yep, you too can have your very own common cold virus. Get your entire school a sick day by releasing viruses throughout your classroom. Just a couple bucks off of Amazon Prime. So with your ingredients in hand, do a pen pineapple apple pen. I have an enzyme. I have a virus. Ugh, virus enzyme. All you have to do is splice the two together and uh, voila, you have the perfect cocktail to defeat Luke Cage. And the best thing about this virus is that it's airborne. You don't even need to attempt to pierce Luke Cage's skin. Just invite him out to the local Java Hut, get two cups of coffee, laugh over what a terrible lawyer Matt Murdock is, and then finally wait for the sign that the airborne cold virus you've exposed him to in the cafe has taken effect, turning his impenetrable skin back to normal. Just wait for that first sniffle and... BAM! Another superhero's head to mount on your wall. It's a heck of a lot better prize than Aquaman. And with that, Brains 3, Brawn 0. <laughs> But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Also, a very special thank you to the team over at the Wisecrack channel for helping me with the research for this episode. If you enjoyed it, then please do me a favor, and also yourself a favor, and go check them out. They're some of my best friends on YouTube, and where we do mostly science and math-based theories, they do theories and analyses based on the humanities, philosophy, ethics, things like that. So if you enjoyed this episode, then you are going to love their analysis on my favorite current animated series, Rick and Morty. Legitimately one of the funniest, smartest shows on right now, and their analysis of it is one of the funniest, smartest videos of that show online. So pull a Luke Cage and punch that button you see on screen to show them some love and find yourself a new favorite channel. And make sure you stay tuned, we have a lot more Marvel on the way next month, so headbutt that subscribe button to join the notification squad. Notification squad! Gotta go! See you next week.